Divine Truth Spirit Experiences Discussions Experiences of people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of the first part of the personal experience from spirits is Steward and Spirits Who Study Jesus and Mary, during which Mary channels Stuart, a behavioral scientist who has been studying Jesus since Jesus was eight years old and who was offended two weeks earlier by Jesus' comments and has worked through his original emotional response and now has a conversation with Jesus about science, human behavior, and Jesus' condition. The session was recorded on the 20th of March, 2018, from 11.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello again, everyone. Um, this time, Mary and I are still doing some channeling today, and, and uh, this time, Stuart, who we've talked to once before, uh, wants to come and talk some more, and so we're giving him the opportunity to do that. The last time we talked to Stuart was uh, two weeks ago or so, so if you look at our recordings on the, at the beginning of March, you'll find in amongst them some recordings of mediumship, and this one is about Stuart, who, who has been surrounding my, me and my life for some years, so like close to 40 or over 40 years now. So he's watched me uh, over the last 40 years, and that's what we, he was going to come and talk to us about the first time. But the uh, discussion got a bit interrupted with the fact that Stuart felt a bit offended with some of the things I was saying to him. So uh, we'll see how we go in this particular discussion. Mary's just getting ready to connect to Stuart and talk to him. So we're just going to wait for Mary to do that and then we'll get started on the discussion with Stuart. Yes, hello. Hello, Stuart. How are you? Well, not too badly. <laughs> uh, as you know, I took some issue with our last discussion and it's taken me some time to, mm -hmm. uh, to consider returning to speak with you. Yeah. Mary has been trying to speak with me about it, yep. and as you know, I took some offence mm -hmm. at what occurred. Mm. Um, You'll notice that a lot of people do that <laughs> with me, don't they? <laughs> indeed, I have, I have observed that yeah. many times. <laughs> yeah. um, but it is, as I encountered, it's a little different. On the receiving end. Yes. Mm. Yes. And mm. I must say, I, I felt the challenge quite severely. Yeah. And it's sort of, sort of like an emotional challenge, isn't it? More yes. than an intellectual one. Uh, yeah. C correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but I've had some time to think it over mm -hmm. and I, and some time to consider your motivations. Mm -hmm. I do see now that, um, I have been observing you without perhaps looking in depth at your motivations or I felt that I correctly understood your motivations mm. and this has caused me to reconsider a lot of what I have observed in you mm. uh, given that I had an experience where I Clear, it's clear to me now that I mistook your motivations. Mm. And I must say it took me some time to establish that. To realise that. Yes. Yeah. And that's why sort of when you just look at a situation, we're always looking at it through our own emotional filters. And, and, and so we're judging, you could say we're judging things based upon how we might have been treated in the past or how, in, in your case, how you, you probably reflected a bit about how your dad's treated you I mean, yes. when you were on earth. And, and then you start thinking, well, if, I, if, if someone's saying the same kind of thing to me, then it means that they are the same kind of person with the same kind of motivations. And it's often not the case, but it's what we believe to be the case at the time. Yes, and I must say that I felt that as a scientist, I was immune to such responses. Oh, okay. Uh, I felt that I uh, could analyse rationally. And just sort of dispassionately. Uh, yes, dispassionately <laughs> yeah. a good, is a good adjective. Yeah. Uh, and yet, uh, I, uh, part of my issue with returning is that I felt uh, humili uh, I felt exposed in the exchange. Yeah. 
And then after that, I realized I felt quite, um, well, almost sheepish <laughs> yeah. uh, about... Sort of embarrassed about, yes. about your response. Yeah. Yes. But it's, yeah, to, to me, um, a person with, say, your experiences with your father is highly likely to have that response, given the fact that, you know, the treat, treatment from a parent um, usually you know, was not undertaken with the same, you know, with the, usually the motivations for the treatment of it from a parent are quite selfish from the parent's perspective. Mm. Um, and so frequently we end up growing up thinking that whenever we're in a similar situation, that it means that people have exactly the same motivations. Mm. Mm. Yep. Yes, I can see that. Mm. Uh, the motivations are interesting, aren't they? Like when you look at people's motivations. Yes, and and I suppose um, this experience has shown me that um, while I have been observing you for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, I have been observing you somewhat dispassionately, mm -hmm. uh, but also I haven't necessarily uh, observed you as part of a... Um, I haven't necessarily observed the systems in which you are interacting, mm -hmm. the social context of your interactions. Mm -hmm. And so I've s sort of been viewing you as my subject mm -hmm. and rather than looking at um, the, environment the subject in, which... in context. Mm -hmm. And it, this does, this was the flavour of my... Um, Sort of your analysis or, or investigation. Prior. Investigation, and this is the um, this is the the uh, type of investigation that I enjoyed in mm -hmm. my um, scientific inquiry and my field while on Earth. Yep. And yep. Uh, this experience has shown me some of the limitations of that approach, mm. especially when you are the subject. Mm -hmm. um, and while I have been attempting to understand you, the individual, and understand, uh, I did think that I was attempting to understand your motivations, mm -hmm. although uh, this was a humbling experience in, in terms of recognising that when I became a part of the um, equation or interaction. And we're, and we're lost... talking now when you're emotionally part of the interaction rather yes. than just sort of dispassionately observing. Well, when I engaged with you directly, yeah. uh, then I realised that I lost perspective. Yeah. And initially after our discussion, I decided, well, that was a good enough reason to not engage with you ever again, yeah. because I wanted to um, uh, remain objective in my observations and as soon as I interacted with you I felt I lost some objectivity. Yeah. Um, but I've since consulted with others and had my own um, thought processes and reflections about that mm. and uh, decided that this is showing me much more about um, humanity, mm -hmm. uh, our, our humanity, our shared humanity mm -hmm. um, and the uh, the the psyche <laughs> um, than I had previously wanted to explore, but that perhaps this is an opportunity for me. Mm. Uh, I, I, I do feel that um, there's a level of comfort or safety for myself in uh, remaining dispassionate and and removed from uh, direct engagement with Cer my subjects. Certainly. And that is what I preferred on Earth, mm. even though I was involved in the study of uh, human behaviour and, uh, and s s sort of the, the um, experience of, of being human, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, was all, I always uh, maintained a distance from my subjects and so as to not be emotionally involved yes mm. and very often not even involved in, yeah. in a um with individuals in direct interactions yes yes um 
So it's almost like you, looking through a glass mirror where it's only one way. They, yes. You can see them, but they can't see you yes. type of thing. And indeed, many times I did exactly that. <laughs> and I also attempted to um, analyse the behaviour of uh, animals within mm -hmm. my laboratory and compare that to the behaviour uh, of humans. Yep. And I was very comfortable in that yeah. way. Yeah. And, and no doubt this experience has... Uh, exposed some arrogance in myself which um i do not <laughs> i do not um i do not neglect the irony that i accused you in fact of arrogance <laughs> yeah well, that's often what happens you know that many people have accused me of arrogance that's a, certainly a common a common uh, accusation and mm. um, for the same reasons of course too that that their own emotional state is being challenged in some way and so they have to revert to some kind of personal attack in order to... yes and indeed this has ass assisted me with my um I, I have always been very interested in um the responses that i do observe to yourself because mm. um to some degree, I'm able to analyse your uh, spiritual, what would you, you would call your spiritual body, mm -hmm. um, the metaphysics mm -hmm. of your, what I observe in, of you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and being able to, uh, what I felt with confidence was to analyse that, in fact, that you didn't display the features that, of what I would commonly observe in one who is arrogant mm, mm. Um, then of course when we had our interaction and I felt certain that you were quite arrogant <laughs> um, this created a, a lot of um, questioning within myself sort of disparity about the previous measurements you've seen of arrogance and the colors that you see in the spirit body and so forth of a person with arrogance and then not seeing that in me but feeling that you that I'm still arrogant type of thing Indeed, mm. and then and then, which caused me to question my previous observations right, yeah. of others, <laughs> yeah. uh, and eventually I got around to questioning my my analysis in this particular situation, yeah, yeah. and I realised that a key part of science is a key part of good scientific discovery mm -hmm. and, and analysis. Mm -hmm. um, is the scientist's ability to analyse themselves, oneself. Spot on. And this was quite a turning point in my career, in fact. <laughs> so as yeah. you can see, it's been quite a... Um, a journey. Like, <laughs> the last two weeks have been a journey for you. Yes, yeah. two, two weeks in your time. <laughs> but I but a long like, time for you. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Much has been um, elucidated to mm. me. Mm. And that was probably what I was trying to get at with regard to the comment, actually, is that how a true scientist has to fully understand his own limitations in what he's looking at to truly observe, you know, and, and analyse what's going on in another. And I was just wondering, you know, how you made the comment about uh, you often see the interactions, obviously you often see the interactions going on on Earth, but do you also see the spirit, you know, the spirits who are influencing the people to interact with me a certain way? Or, at times, yeah. yes. At times, it is quite clear. Yeah. Um, so this is quite a broad question. It is, yeah. Um, and and perhaps I could go back to my previous statements about observing. Uh, so up until now, my analysis of yourself has included in recent times. Now we'll we'll be discussing mm -hmm. um, since you've had quite um, a lot of interactions with. Um, for want of a better word, the public. Mm -hmm. um, Just people generally. Larger mm -hmm. groups of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I have been able to observe what I, um, what I, a certain condition within mm -hmm. your spiritual body mm -hmm. um, and uh, analyse that in and correlate that with certain behaviours. And I'm quite used to doing this mm -hmm. in people on earth. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I have observed uh, many times the interaction, very, very similar to what I now understand was our own, mm -hmm. where I would just um, observe a certain set of conditions within yourself, which uh, seem to correlate with uh, what I would call the higher... Um, I'm searching for a word to describe it. You would perhaps call it a higher emotional or spiritual state. 
something that I would associate with goodliness mm -hmm. yep. within a person. I could observe within yourself. So can we perhaps call it moral or ethical purity? Uh, yes, yep. it's a good terminology. Yep. Well, it's not the terminology I was necessarily using, but it fits. Yep. Uh, so mm -hmm. I would see that. And then I would observe um, various people interacting with you and having what I now understand to be a very similar to re reaction to my own. Mm -hmm. But... Um, and I, to some degree, I could observe um, that you had certain behaviours that I didn't necessarily correlate with this goodliness. Mm -hmm. um, so that should have been a sign for myself. And in fact, it was, in a way, uh, a point of uh, my desire to analyse further. Do you understand what I mean by that? Yeah, it, it seems to me that perhaps another way of saying it, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but another way of saying it might be that um, you observe certain behaviours in myself that you couldn't really understand the source of and it didn't really correlate with what you understood was really going was or, or what was really going on because because there wasn't a full analysis of you know what the motivations were and so and if you don't understand the motivations sometimes you don't understand the action and frequently what I observe in people observing me <laughs> is that they think that I'm acting differently in, in what seem to be similar situations when the reality is I'm reacting to a completely different motivation in the person rather than the actual what seems to appear to be a similar situation. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yes, um, perhaps I could add to that to speak mm -hmm. more about um, the way that I have been observing and analysing not just yourself but others on earth. Sure. Uh, yep. So what we commonly see on the earth mm -hmm. is, um, and perhaps I could call it a spectrum, mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so to some degree from where I am now and others who work with me, we are able to observe the um, spiritual condition, so you would perhaps call that the condition of the spirit body mm -hmm. attached to the physical body of mm -hmm. the person on earth, as well as the physical body's functionings. Mm -hmm. We're able to observe the behavior of the people. Mm -hmm. And what we usually see is a spectrum. So there are those who we would uh, put at one end of the spectrum where we see um, a certain condition within the spiritual body that we associate with unhappiness, mm -hmm. um, it, uh, badness or evilness. Um, or the desire for evil, is that what you're talking about here or just? No, I'm just speaking, I'm not speaking about desires mm -hmm. as much as an observation of our, a, our condition. A colour, if you like. Uh, Colours, features, features within the, the spiritual body. body. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then we analyse that in relation to the person's um, lifestyle and behaviour on the earth. Right. Their yeah. relationships, their lifestyle, uh, the well, certain um, the interactions they, they have yeah. and their behaviours and choices, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so what we notice is there are certain people, some people, um, uh, I suppose you would call it an intent, demonstrate an intent. Um, and this is why I'm, um, I don't wish to say that we've been analysing motivations because I think that my mm -hmm. recent experiences have demonstrated that there's some um, uh, holes. So you've just been mostly analysing actions. Actions and, and then states. the corresponding state. Yeah. So what we see is um, there's some people who, who uh, take actions that are harmful to others mm -hmm. and they demonstrate quite, quite a dark uh, condition mm -hmm. in their spiritual body. So they're full of greys and blacks and Browns, red, brownie reds yes. and, and anger and yes. you can see these kind of things. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, and they do look darker. In, yeah. in color. And they, do they? Do you observe how they struggle to even the spirit body struggles to even maintain its uh, disease-free state, if you like? In certain cases, yeah. it it certainly depends. And also, you you asked earlier about the ability to observe other spiritual bodies mm -hmm. uh, influencing that. Um, and it is quite interesting, in fact, to observe your. Um, your recent discussions with Constance yeah, um, because yeah. this was, this is in fact fascinating for us mm -hmm. um, because we were able for the first time really uh, in this context to hear 
uh, sort of uh, the type of um, spiritual entity that we have seen influencing others on earth mm -hmm. um, to speak of their experience because um, usually we find that those spiritual entities are very difficult to engage. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, we have never engaged with one mm -hmm. uh, in you mean, that You mean state. had a personal interaction with one? I, yes, that's what Or I do mean. you mean just observe one? No, no, no. You've observed no. them plenty of times? Uh, we've observed them very, very often, yep. but never had the um, opportunity or avenue or knowledge of how to engage with them in an interaction such, yes. as, such yeah. as we are having. Obviously, we have interactions between ourselves and... Um, people from various different, uh, as, as we mentioned Spheres in the previous discussion. Yeah. Yes. Um, but this kind of entity, which we've called it an entity really until this point. So you haven't really seen them as people heavy... before this point? Or um, uh, you've sort of seen them as not existing on Earth prior? Or, uh, no, or... uh, it's, it's not so much. Given that we've never been able to have a a conversation, for mm -hmm. want of a better word, mm -hmm. um, with such an entity who is expressly, obviously influencing a person on earth to do evil deeds. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't been really, we've hypothesized mm -hmm. about their origin. Mm -hmm. And certainly a common hypothesis is that they were people living on earth who have somehow um, devolved <laughs> yep. into a situation where this is all that they are doing. Yep. We've never been able to confirm or deny that because we've never actually had the interaction. Right. And this is why it was fascinating. Mm. And, and it's mm. actually quite moving for a lot of us to observe um, the situation of Constance changing mm. and mm. to come to understand her as a complex human being who mm. had some troubling uh, situations um who is now uh, many of us have been quite overwhelmed by the the measure of her change in such a short time and mm. also the um <sighs> whereas once we've observed these people to be almost uh, without intelligence uh, almost. Cru cr crude, crude. Uh, like to yeah. have a crude operational uh, operation in, yes i get what you're saying um it, it, she, she's a mm. nuanced uh, complete personality yes, and yes. We, we, we we've not previously um sort of seen that or understood that. understood that or observed such a it, what it seems like a metamorphosis which we understand is not the case yeah yeah so in fact that that's been very interesting mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh again getting back to this spectrum mm -hmm. um we see people on in a certain end or certain section of this spectrum who have a very what you would call dark darkened uh, soul condition, but we don't know. It's, it's, not, what, it's not what you label it, but no, it's, no. What, it's what we would label it if we, yes. Mayor and I were talking about it. Yes, mm. we observe a spiritual body. Yep. Uh, we observe the set of behaviours. It's very clear that there's a strong correlation. Yep. And at times we observe certain entities influencing the, the person's behaviour, yep. which then compounds the condition of the spiritual body. Of the person on earth. Yes. And you darkening. see their you see their their, their condition darkening as well. Yes, what we observe, what we can see, a very very striking correlation yep. with I mean, people currently living on Earth, is the correlation between behaviour and the substance, quality, uh, colour, condition of the spiritual body. Yeah, this is irrefutable. Yeah. So, so again, back to the spectrum. We yep. see certain people engaged in certain behaviours uh, who ha display the darkest conditions, if you like. Mm -hmm. Then we, we see other people who have a lot more greys, some, some darker hues, n no real vibrant colour within their spiritual body. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but not malevolent. Uh, not malevolent, but what we would call severely unhappy. Mm -hmm. And we do see a correlation with certain behaviours mm -hmm. there as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, here I'm speaking in very broad brush strokes. Of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, because between each new... one, there's obviously many millions of <laughs> people in different states. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I guess I'm attempting to <clears throat> um, explain the correlation we see between behaviour mm -hmm. and a certain uh, condition within the body. Yep spiritual body uh, and then we see people who we would call um 
Well, we have previously called those uh, who are good people or have goodness within them. Mm -hmm. And we see a common set of behaviours. Mm -hmm. Again, they fall in a spectrum of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but we see certain behaviours engaged and we see um, a brightening of the body or a, 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 a fl more, uh, more smooth flow. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, this is well established amongst us. Yes. Yep. With yourself and certain others around you, there, and this is what um, what we've been very interested in in recent years, is that we do see certain behaviours engaged that um, are either not engaged by the vast majority of people, no matter where they fall on the spectrum, mm -hmm. And we see certain behaviours that we would normally correlate with, um, in some cases, even a darker condition. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't see that reflected. In fact, we see at times, uh, not just in yourself now, we're talking of others, a significant brightening condition when a certain behaviour is engaged. Mm -hmm. But it's unclear, <laughs> because this is it's quite embarrassing really to admit, we haven't paid enough uh, attention mm -hmm. to this sort of quality of motivation, what is motivating the behaviour. Mm. We've just had a crude, what feels now to be very crude, mm. um, analysis of behaviour and spiritual body condition, mm. um, and you are the largest anomaly. Mm. Um, obviously, you do display like all of the behaviours that we see in those um who we've called the have the goodness in mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. but there are other anomalies we would call them <laughs> of behavior that um and it i guess ours is a striking example mm -hmm. where you engaged in a certain behavior and what i understand now is that most people who engage in that behavior have a certain motivation mm -hmm. uh this is the um Again, I feel highly, highly embarrassed because it seems so obvious now, but... Uh, mm, but it, everything's hence... not like that when you're, no. <laughs> you're looking at it, isn't it? No. So, so but... I don't know if you have any need to be embarrassed, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and it, is, it is the... Again, I, I see the problem of a scientist who does not self-analyse mm. because mm. you can become almost a slave to your method, mm -hmm. a slave to what you have decided is your method of analysis, mm -hmm and stay within that as a constraint. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is known. Uh, you know that's a big problem with scientists on Earth. <laughs> so yes. you already know that. Don't yes, you? Yeah. but I didn't see <laughs> how I yourself. was doing that, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so, um, yes, yeah, so now I see that motivation is a crucial factor. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I, in my analysis of yourself, I had I had at times given consideration to the fact that your motivations are somehow distinct from others um, the, of anyone on the spectrum mm -hmm. because I saw you as a distinct individual since your time of it was actually birth really mm -hmm. when I began to be able to observe um, and and really uh, when I say birth. Um, really, it was around the time that I did start to observe you at, a, at around eight years old. I, I obviously I spoke back. to others mm. uh, yeah, who, yeah, who gotcha. saw your birth and yeah. so on. Yeah. But it, it, around this eight-year-old mark, um, I became drawn to you for reasons really um, that I'm not fully aware of. But just because I started to notice um, differences within your spirit body, mm -hmm. Um, and it, it, then I started the analysis of behaviour and spirit body um, observation in others as well mm -hmm. uh, because I was interested in your own. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed to sort of pop out at me, if, if for want of a better way So you're of trying to compare, it. I suppose, make comparisons. Compare and understand what yep. I was observing. Yep. Then obviously as time went on and it was once you had an awakening to this different identity, mm -hmm. I then, that was sort of evidence So you me. observed that? I observed your awakening to that and mm -hmm. I observed a significant change 
in your spiritual body at that time as well. Mm. And that was somehow very um, fascinating mm-hmm. and cause for a lot of discussion. And to be fair, it also gave weight, it gave credence to your claim in our eyes because we could see an anomaly in a person's spirit body on mm. earth and you were making a unique claim. Well, perhaps not entirely unique, but uh, <laughs> an no, unusual. A lot, a lot of people in si- asylums <laughs> make the same claim. <laughs> yes. yeah. But clearly you, dis- you displayed behaviours that mm. were very rational in yeah. other areas. And yeah. so we knew that, that, you know, yeah, there was something different going on. Yeah. So, um, so at the time of, uh, let's call it my awakening i don't know I'd, I'd probably call it my waking up but um the it, it, you even before that time you were seeing specific differences in terms of the way i would act and the way i would treat people and the way uh, uh, or is it or are you it, more concerned about just looking at the condition of the body the condition of the body appeared different. And, and co-relating that to anything? Or were you just looking at the condition of the body and comparing the condition of the body? Uh, initially, I was looking at the condition of the body and attempting to... Uh, well, it was obvious the comparison... Um, the Sorry, the differential, uh, the difference between your your body and others' so bodies perhaps, was could, very Could distinct. you outline some of the differences that happened before that transfer... <laughs> If we can call it the my awakening. Well, if we call it, we can call it whatever you like. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm not attached to that. It was a, tra- a tra- change, a change. change. Yeah. Yeah. But really, at the change, uh, there was just a heightening of what was already there. Right. It wasn't right. a significant um, difference. No. It was just a heightening of that difference. Yes. Yeah. So, um, to describe the spiritual body. Uh, from this time when you were eight years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best way I can describe it is that there was a quality of um, light or, or a quality that uh, when observing the body mm-hmm. that was quite bright, almost like blindingly bright mm-hmm. in comparison and um white almost Mm -hmm. in comparison to others Mm -hmm. and this seemed to grow as you grew and made more choices did more had more behaviors Mm -hmm. but again (laughs) um i was finding it difficult to quantify which behaviors were uh creating the changes the mm-hmm. the heightening it's it wasn't changing as much as heightening mm-hmm. and then i i really happened upon the 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 theory that it didn't matter what you did it was just the more that you engaged with your own personal choices and behaviors mm-hmm. uh your will you would probably call it mm. or, uh, desire probably i would call it a yeah. desire mm-hmm. um that you got brighter mm-hmm. but uh it, it was still obvious that there were still conditions, just like there's conditions in any spiritual body that we observe. On, a, on Earth. You're on a, on about Earth. Where there's, in, uh, where there's injuries. Anywhere that yeah. we observe them. Where there's... Well, I could bring some people that don't have any, but... <laughs> uh, no, no, yes. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not referring to that. Yeah. Uh, and I have met. I have met yeah. some yeah. like that. Uh, and certainly from what I understand in the position that I am in, the more one uh, changes and grows in this life, the clearer the energy flow occurs. That's certainly been my experience and it, 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 it plays out theoretically in that when I meet people who come purportedly from higher places Mm -hmm. that I'm not yet able to access, Mm -hmm. they display uh, an increased um, health, Mm -hmm. if you like, of the spiritual of the spirit body, body. Mm. so it, that that mm. makes rational sense. Mm. But for yourself, there was, if I could say it this way, um, evidence of health <laughs> uh, or evidence of um, a condition, a, a, a quality, mm. a quality 
that did not exist in others, even though it was still evident that there were... Um, Un unhealthy parts of the body. Yes, mm. unhealthy parts of the body, blockages and certain areas mm -hmm. where there was problems. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that and correlated... Is, yeah. Yep, and that mm. correlated with um, behaviours, uh, your physical body and mm -hmm. physical issues that you just like it does mm, with for, everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there was just this distinct... I would, I would like to call it light. Mm -hmm. it, there was a brightness of light within mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the more you engaged, the more you grew and matured and did more things, this lightness seemed to grow. But my, uh, my problem with that was <laughs> that it didn't really matter what you did. It was just the more you chose things, it seemed to get brighter. Mm -hmm. But then there was this significant uh, change in the level of that mm -hmm. when you went through this whatever you want to call it, waking up, awakening. Yeah. Um, yes, and that, that has been uh, maintained, um, even though at times we see these ebbs and flows, mm -hmm. it never ebbs to the point where it was before that awakening, mm -hmm. but there are um, times when the brightness is very bright and then mm. it's um, it's And do you see how that correlates with my emotional state? Or have you never analysed my emotional state? Well, it is difficult now because we do highly correlate the... Uh, it's difficult because we've never really analysed emotions as right. emotions. We, we don't... We like to deal in things that we see. That's yeah. why we analyse behaviour and observation of the spiritual body. Yeah. Um, and this is why it's been difficult on the motivation side of things and also on the emotion side of things. Clearly that is, uh, you know, I was a behavioralist or I was interested in behavior on earth mm -hmm. and I've carried that through and, and because I find this <sighs> emotions and motivations, I've almost been quite... Um, so you, so that, I find that interesting that you've, <laughs> so you've never really up until recently, obviously, never really seen that a lot of people's behaviour is motivated by something. Uh, or, no, or, no, or, no, that's no. not clear. I just haven't valued it. Uh, oh, I um, see. You haven't valued it as a measurement system. That's, or, that's correct. I've, I've found it to be very um, difficult to define and I like things that I can define. <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> I, of course, of course, understand that emotions are a part of the person mm -hmm. and that motivations drive behaviour. Mm -hmm. But because these things are difficult to measure quant and quantify mm -hmm. in a way that pleases me, mm -hmm. uh, then I have instead sought to deal in behaviour and correlate that with um, levels of happiness, goodness, condition, condition of the spiritual body, mm -hmm. understanding that motivation and emotion uh, exist within there. But I just don't care to analyse it very much right. because I find it quite... So, but, but how did you find then when I talked to, when I talked to the group uh, in the AGs in in the assistance groups in two thousand and uh, when is it now? <laughs> Was it last year or the year before? I can't remember. But you know the group about God's laws. How I talked about God's all emotions being able to be mathematically measured. Did you hear that discussion? Or? Certainly, but yeah. uh, look, I can sense. <laughs> that I have some sort of anger about it. Yeah. Uh, um, I guess I feel, and this is the difficulty, I don't want to repeat our difficulty, uh, try and be more um, humble about what I feel is going on here now, mm -hmm. in that I feel like this is this maths and this knowledge is something that can be obtained by those in a condition higher than me. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that um, by pointing it out and asking me to engage with it, I have an emotional response, ah, which is you are trying, you are, you, you're trying to say what I'm doing is not valid when I understand that that is a possibility, but I'm not there yet. So I'm trying to work within what I can do with an understanding that I one day I will be able to mathematically measure it, and then I'd like to. But right now right, I can't, right, so I why you. do I go into it? 
Yeah, I, I, I sort of find that interesting in a way because there are people who can come to you and answer your questions about the mathematics involved with it, even right now, I would have thought. Um, but I can't analyse it myself. Ah, I see. So I wish to be involved in the analysis, the science. I, I, I love so, it. So you find it you so say you find it challenging when you can't personally be involved in the analysis. You sort of feel I suppose it's a feeling, isn't it, again, of feeling maybe a little devalued. I feel yeah, devalued. Yeah. Um I feel my work is not important. Right, yeah. I, I see. And yeah. that the, that that this feeling uh which I do now understand uh uh, uh, typifies some interactions that I, uh, I had with my father when on earth, mm. who was also uh, an, an educated man mm. um, of... But also uh, highly competitive. Yes, mm. and his attempts to... Um, Keep you in uh, ..make your place. me feel devalued <laughs> mm. because I was did not yet understand all of the theory or science that he understood... Uh, I constantly felt that what I was doing had no validity or value. Um, whereas now I feel, you know, all science builds upon science mm. and I, surely I can be a part of this while I continue to develop. Mm. Uh, and this is, I, I do, as I said, I'm attempting to be very rational about this, but I feel very confronted when you, when you raise that, because I feel that we're on the verge again of you <laughs> telling me everything I'm doing is not valid. So yeah. I'm attempting to come at this differently. Yeah, no, and, and that's not my motivation, obviously, but... Um, I, I think I think what I need to come to terms with is that it's a feeling that I have. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I feel uh, that... A fear that I have about my own work. And caused by your interaction with a father who was what I would classify as a person who highly competitive and always trying to put down his son um, in order to keep his son, in order for his, for your father to feel like he's superior to you. And uh, yeah, that, and that is definitely worth feeling about because that, because I feel that would actually help you a lot with regard to your scientific analysis. Because once you're free of that emotion, then when things are challenging, they're not so, uh, as they're not easily dismissed still and and also there's an interest in them sort of like mm, um, mm. yes no I, I i understand your point and mm. this is part of what this since our previous discussion i've had to um realize that there's a depth of personal analysis that must be completed mm -hmm. uh that i have not before now been willing to engage mm. Mm. and it does impact upon uh, the, f the freedom of your of your studies. Um, in other words, I, I feel you will find your studies more enjoyable once that particular once those particular emotions are addressed. Mm. Yes, and mm. perhaps that is the case. Mm. I'm not. I, I suppose I, it's like you know you started to address that emotion two weeks ago, and already you've had a significant change in the way that you analyse things, and then you look back on what you were doing in your analysis before two weeks ago and feel it's quite rudimentary. Mm. Um, uh, I suppose what I'm saying is if you could have the faith that, that that's also in the future yes, uh, as I well. See. You know what I mean? Every, every emotion that you do address internally uh, and you released internally obviously is going to have another impact and you'll look back on that and go, wow, that was a big change. You know, that was worth doing type of mm. thing rather mm. than sort of seeing it as, um, oh, you know, I'm just getting pulled down again and I'm just being told that I'm not valuable anymore or again. Mm. Or again. Um, yeah. Hmm. I, I, yes, I suppose I, I suppose I admit that I feel desperately frightened that what I am doing is somehow invalid or will be invalidated because I feel very passionate about what it is that I do. Mm -hmm. And I... And I feel you become even more so the more scope there is to it. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I, see than less, yeah, I see the it's logic. So, it's sort of like the more you let go of the things that impede 
the understanding or, or the ability to analyze, the greater joy you're going to have and therefore the more enthusiasm you will probably have towards the analysis. You, you follow yes. me? And that's what I've found myself, you know, the more the more I've let my fear of something dictate how much I'm willing to uh, listen to or experience. And you, you've, know, you've observed me over the last, uh, well, since the time of my waking up. And so that's now, what, so 22 years. And you could see there's been times during those 22 years where my emotions have prevented me from accepting a new, mm. accepting a new thing. But once I went through it emotionally, and accepted the new thing, there were immediate improvements in my life as well as improvements in my happiness and improvements in my ability to interact with my surroundings. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, and I, I think if you can have some faith in that, that process, rather than seeing it uh, that it all might be taken away from you mm. it, uh, and, in, and instead seeing it as it always going to get added to you and this is what I observe in a lot of people on earth too, is that when we talk to them about progress, you know, particularly spiritual progress, progress in love and truth, and most people feel like things are getting taken away from them. And mm. so then they become very frightened or, uh, and even aggressive about, you know, how dare you take those particular things away from me? When the reality is if they do make those particular changes, they then look back and go, oh, why didn't I do that earlier <laughs> type of thing? Um, and, and it's a very similar, like, it's a very similar thing that happens in the spirit world as to what happens to these people on earth, I feel, mm. in that you can, you can constantly be worried about what might be taken from you, but anything that's pure in you, and, and I feel in you, a, a pure desire for analysis, observation, behavioral analysis, mm. it's a specific field of endeavor that there's not, as you know, not too many people really involved in, in a, in a complete way, I feel, mm. um, you know, those things, those desires will grow and your ability to do it will grow mm. as well and do it with more information at your fingertips will grow. So I, I sort of, that's why I feel these discussions about what emotions inhibit that are very, very beneficial to people because and this is why I engage them, even though, as you know, from your observations with my engagement of uh, these kind of things with people on earth f quite frequently it's challenging and quite frequently it's not in my interest <laughs> mm. um, to engage them but I, but I do understand the benefit of engaging them perhaps more than most people do um, mm. Mm. and I feel that will be the, that's the case with everybody that's the way that I have grown myself you know um, I don't know if how aware you are of my life prior to returning I suppose you would have heard things. Is that correct about my life prior to returning, but not sort of being able to, of course, analyze those things or? No. Right. And I've attempted to, that's, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, and so again, as I've said, I've attempted to stay um, true to what it is I can observe. Right. Uh, so I've had hypotheses. I've spoken to people mm -hmm. about, uh, and I've listened to you about um, your experience and what you understand to be happening. And I've spoken to others about what they say that they have observed uh, and the process that is occurring with you. Mm -hmm. But I have tried to stay true to the discernible evidence that mm -hmm. I have before. Um, um, deciding upon anything, if, if that makes sense. I, I've, I've tried to remain purely a scientist who is very fascinated by what it is I'm observing. So what made you then uh, analyse before the eight year period? I was simply interested in the, I was already, so I, I'm always interested in people's behaviour mm -hmm. and the, the, as soon as I was able to discern, discern people's uh, spiritual bodies, mm -hmm. this was very fascinating because mm -hmm. now I had something that I could quantify it, that correlated with behavior. Mm -hmm. And so obviously I was drawn to that immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I noticed <laughs> your spiritual body it appeared distinct in some way. So I was drawn to you 
to observe your behavior to mm -hmm. understand how that was occurring mm -hmm. that then caused me to um almost immediately i was able to see <laughs> that there was an anomaly of some kind mm -hmm. and so i was following you uh, because I, I wanted to understand what was creating the anomaly. yeah i suppose the question is more along this line um in terms of uh, the, th and here again, I'm not being critical. I'm just sort of looking at what I feel are probably uh, some holes in the analysis, if I, sp I suppose you could call it that way. And um, that if you plug them up, that might be a more complete analysis. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and as you know, I, like I've got a very scientific bent myself. So yeah. obviously, um, you know, these are the kinds of things that interest me. But when I was, when you were, when you first met me when I was eight and you observed me over a period of time, you got to the conclusion at some point that you needed to ask some questions about my life from birth to eight. Yes. The piece of my life that you hadn't observed, I suppose, is yes. what I'm talking to. Yes. Talking about. Um, but I find it interesting that there was no desire to analyse what happened before the birth. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, because that would surely pay because I, I thought from our previous discussion that you were interested in um, how it was that certain people could return to Earth. Uh, yes, but that didn't come until I uh, learned really through you yeah. at the time of your awakening that people could return to Earth. Oh, okay. I okay. wasn't... Um, I, I, that yeah, sort I, well, of... Even since then, I, I, I suppose, asking the questions about what happened before my birth seems to me to be still a valid part of the analysis. Does that make sense? Um, Certainly, you mean speaking to others about what Yeah, well, obviously you couldn't you observe were. it yourself because no. you weren't there, but, um, but there are others that obviously might have observed it. I've never met anyone who observed your... Uh, um, Return. Or return. They observed conception, but they couldn't discern um, uh, how this sort of how it actually spark happened. Spark appeared in you. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. That's uh, what it would observe, or what it would look like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and can we say that um, I suppose one of the most striking things about my observations thus far, which have been um, confirmed by others who did observe you prior to age eight, mm -hmm. was that um, there does seem to be a correlation between, a very strong correlation between your independent behaviour, that your independent choices, mm -hmm. And the um, how clear this spark is displayed. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So when I make more independent choices that seem to be more harmonious with desire and what I love to do, the spark appears brighter. Is that what you were referring to specifically? <laughs> I, I suppose I'm attempting to say that be, as a small infant, yep. when you weren't making personal choices, that spark was discernible but much uh, Ah, yes, uh, until the... Until smaller, the, almost. It, it appeared smaller. Until the intellect was developed enough to be able to determine that it could make choices. To engage will. Yeah, to engage desire, and I so, would probably yes. call it. Yeah. And it's, while I can't speak about motivation and desire, yeah. all I uh, can speak with um, certainty about is that the more you were in charge of the choice, no matter what the choice, this thing grew. Grew, yeah. So it wasn't about the level of brightness. It's about the discernibility, how big it was. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. No, yes. no, I get that. And I sort of, that helps me understand a few things myself, I think. Obviously, obviously you know that this is a bit of an experiment for me as well. Um, but I've put myself through the experiment. And, Indeed. But, uh, yeah, it's probably helped me understand why, as a child, I did have this common, commonly this feeling of, going towards or away from the bright a uh, brightness you know uh internally it's hard to describe but um probably not the way i describe it doesn't is not the way it probably was but um but i suppose what i'm getting at is that would you would you like to meet people <laughs> who observe that i i, I you know because because uh, i obviously the people uh, exist um and i'm pretty sure they'd be happy to come and 
Well, I have talk with attempted you. to investigate this. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know what I have investigated sure. thus far. Yeah. As I said, people observe conception, but as yet, I have never met anyone, and I understand what you speak to people about, about the process of being in a unified soul state, so being in a sphere mm -hmm. where, uh, which enabled this return to be possible. I understand mm -hmm. the, the theory or the hypothesis, if mm -hmm. you like, mm -hmm. um, but I've never met anyone who was in the 36th sphere who saw this process occur. Mm. I, I've met many who observe co conception and many of them who have these, uh, I won't say many, a few of them who have the seemingly perfect spiritual body. Mm. Um, but I've never met anyone who was able to say, I observed a, an entity uh, fragment from itself or change in its nature in in order to inhabit mm. this spiritual and physical body that you now inhabit. I've never, and in fact, I I thought that that from everyone that I've spoken to, mm -hmm. uh, I understood that that was not. Um, there is a common belief, can I say it this way? That it's not possible. That it's not possible. Mm, but I have observed it. You yourself have observed it from this spiritual body? No. Okay. No. Um, it's, uh, I suppose now we're starting to get on some pretty, what would be for yourself some theore theoretical things, but they, mm -hmm. but, but, but they uh, I think, are fairly important to the discussion if you want to, inv you know, get that information. Um, I, I'm certainly interested <laughs> in new hypotheses and yeah, new yeah. information. Yeah. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, I cannot. Um, you won't be able to verify them, as, them. <laughs> until I have proof. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, um, there's a, probably a fairly fast way to bring you a little bit of proof. Um, mm, it's a. It's a. What's the best way of putting this? Um, in the thirty-sixth sphere, if we want to call it that, um, that where where the unified soul in the unified soul condition, as you would have heard in our discussion with the assistance group, that is a that's a place where the soul permanently resides anyway. So, so the physical locations of the earth and the spirit world and the spheres above the the seventh sphere, you know, which are called the celestial spheres by those who live there. Um, and um, they are all uh, locations, if you like, that the half of the soul can still exhibit its spiritual and physical body's conditions uh, until such a point as it no longer requires them, um, the, the, the bodies themselves. Um, and in the 36th dimension, once you're in that unified state, you remain in that unified state and you're now observing things uh, and you can observe even the process of return even of your own of your own self <laughs> if that makes sense um i find it unsettling what you're talking about yeah it is unsettling uh, it was unsettling for me to, <laughs> to have some memories of this too but um but now it sort of feels to me to be quite logical but but uh if I can explain, the, the, best, the best way to illustrate it and perhaps prove that to you is that uh, we're going to manifest another body for you that is a spirit body, not a person on earth, but who is just me, duplicated. So you mean a, a duplicate of your current spirit body? No, no, uh, and it, 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 you, you'll feel and this is where it requires your feelings rather than so much your analysis. Although your analysis is going to be very much a part of, you know, what what is possible to explain. And um, the uh, already one, a person has appeared to you, right? Mm hmm. OK. Um, let yourself feel the person. Mm. What what do you feel? I feel a little. I don't wish to expose this to others. I suppose I, I'm not comfortable exposing my emotions to others. Right. 
Um, but I feel, yes, um, a oh. sense of goodliness. Yeah. I feel, uh, I do feel a similarity uh, between, I'm not accustomed to feeling. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> um, I understand. What, what do you observe? Well, someone with a, a very perfect spiritual body, mm -hmm. a masculine form, mm -hmm. um, it's quite overwhelming emotionally. I don't really want to express that to you mm -hmm. <laughs> or in front of others. No worries, I understand. Um, but, but if we look at it dispassionately again, yes. there's a, there's a hot, high level of emotional feelings coming from the person that cause uh, an emotional reaction in you. Yes. Um, that you're not really understanding. Would that be the best way to describe it? Um, I don't feel perplexed. I don't, you know, I don't feel perplexed. I feel that my emotional response is in relation to this person. Yeah. Uh, I so feel that th there's a good feeling coming from them. And it feels so good that it's sort it's of... It's just overwhelming emotionally. Overwhelming emotionally. Yep, I understand that. Okay, so so now, uh, what, I'm going to allow them to speak with you for a bit, if that's all right. Uh, what do you notice about their personality or nature uh, as a part of this analysis after they speak with you? Yes, I, um, I understand what's occurring now, mm -hmm. okay? What do you feel, Mike? Well, I hear from them what's occurring. <laughs> yes, And Which is I, than... I do see, I, like, I do sense a similarity between this person and yourself. There's mm. no question about that. Mm -hmm. And there's a different quality to the brightness, if I could call it that. Mm -hmm. um, and there are other distinctions that... Um, It's difficult to describe. Mm. Uh, there's distinctions in terms of... Uh... So there's obviously differences between the spirit bodies, isn't there? Because yeah. their particular spirit body has no what you would classify as uh, disease-based injuries, if you like, or injuries. Uh, harm, harm to the body where yeah, the energy no, like is not There's many properly. differences in the spirit body. Of course. But now I'm attempting to engage in the way that you, uh, well, in, at a deeper... Sort of more emotional just, I feeling just need level. to find the words to say it. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult to describe. Mm -hmm. There's a quality to the character... Uh, I, I do not like dealing in these... Um, words that are very uh, non-quantifiable but yes, anyway yes i get you yep. <sighs> there's a quality yeah. there's a uh, there's a similarity mm -hmm. between what i sense is your personality mm -hmm. between this person and it. obviously we've discussed what is happening mm -hmm. but i'm attempting to just dispassionately describe and scientifically describe what's happening. Yes, yes. What I'm observing, not what I've been told, because mm. I feel this is important. Mm. Um, uh, so this per... Um, there's still... I'm still going to have to do a lot more study on this because there's certain... Certainly there's the differences in the spiritual body which are, uh, are like... Um, associated with uh, difficulties in the, s the energy flow. Mm -hmm. uh, but the quality, there's a quality to the l l lightness that mm -hmm. is the same. Mm -hmm. That's undeniable. Mm -hmm. And what seemingly a quality to the personality and character that's undeniable. Yes, that's right. Say. But there are distinctions to... Uh, well, it's hard to know what I'm looking at, but should, if you could just, just be patient, yeah, no, I will attempt to describe. Because I'm happy to, to leave describe. it there and do the extra thing. 
an extra thing. No, I would or, like to describe sure, sure. No. what it is yeah. um, because it will assist me also. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. There's a situation where there's a certain element of yourself Mm -hmm. which does not correlate with this entity in yeah. terms of... And when you say, can you be more specific about what element? Yes, yep. I'm attempting to. No worries. Yep. I'm, not, I'm not trying to pressure you or anything. Well, I feel pressure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, I would like to call it personality, mm -hmm. but I'm unsure if that's the correct terminology. Yep. This is, is just it? an investigation, isn't it? So we're just investigating things at this stage, what you call it. We can label it as we go sort of thing. And no, I would very up, much like to try to describe it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. No worries. Yep. Um, <sighs> there are elements of the... what seems to be a, a personality. Mm -hmm. Or character that are identical in the the level with which they're displayed is slightly different but then there's other elements that the problem I'm having is that I cannot discern them as distinct mm -hmm. from yourself or this this similarity that I find mm -hmm. um, but there is elements within your spiritual body and what seems to be your nature Yes, Suma. So the, I, I guess I'm speaking now with the other person. So it's mm -hmm. like there's some illusory parts of yourself which you wish to maintain as yourself that are not you. That's that's really that's what I was saying. Yes. Yep. Yep. So now I understand what it is I'm observing, yep. but it's very difficult to describe in words exactly how that appears in your spiritual body. Now that I have a comparison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, for, and I for the sake it a of our, bit frustrating actually. No, no that's so understandable. Yeah. And for the sake of our listeners, just because they don't see what you're seeing, and does the body, does the person you're looking at have the same appearance as myself? No. Okay. So this is what is causing some confusion. No. In some ways. No. <laughs> in, in what way? I. <sighs> No, I feel I've been clear about what it is. There's parts of... Yeah, you know, I think you stated it very clearly. I yes. don't know if our listeners are going to understand what you're stating, of course, but because okay. they're not observing what you're observing and what I'm trying to do is help them understand well, what so you're observing. So how, how, how might I help them to um, be more clear? Perhaps, uh, what's the appearance of the person? It just uh, if you can describe how tall they are, um, their general look, uh, the colour of their eyes, um, just general physical appearance. Uh, well, we it was, I don't understand why you wish to discuss that. Because, because that's it, what a lot of people on earth are interested in. They're interested in, like, uh, they don't sort of get spirit, they don't sort of understand the spiritual life itself. And what I'm trying to do as part of this is help them understand some things. Well, um, I, here I'm looking at the quality of the light. It's not right. about the physical form. Okay. Clearly, there's a different physical form. Okay, so now we we're make... I, what That's I'm right. attempting to discuss with you is yeah. the, the because you asked me to sort of move beyond the physical observation no, into I, the feeling. Yeah, not, there's no criticism here, remember, mm. Stuart. I'm just trying to help our listeners understand that you're not looking. Okay. You're not looking at a uh, person who looks the same as me. No, clearly not. Okay, okay. Let me try and be, so if we can more, put it more in, a, have more clarity. If we can put it in a in a in a, in a, if, as if you were talking to a person on earth. This is what I see. Does that make sense? So, well, I feel I need to say. Yeah. 
that when I look at your spiritual body, I look at the spiritual body of the person in front of me. It is very evident that physically, if we were to discuss a physical form, mm. see, I'm not accustomed to even looking at the physical form of a spiritual body. And perhaps I didn't make that clear mm. in my previous. I look at the color and energy flow within a spiritual body. No, now, I, 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 underst I understood that, but I okay. don't know if our listeners did. Right. Did I don't do look at the color of the hair or the physical, <laughs> the size of the nose or, yeah, or, or, you know, or what on the little toe. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is the benefit of working uh, in my field from this realm is that those such things are no longer important. Certainly, we can see a correlation between the physical form on in the earthly body and this, the energy flow and movement of different things within the spiritual body and the correlation between the, the, the two bodies. And did you but, also see the correlation between the disease in the spirit body, should we call it, and the disease in the physical body? Well, what I'm attempting to say is that w <laughs> what I observe as differences in energy flow and colour in the spiritual body certainly correlate with health or disease within the physical body. No worries. So but that's... I don't call them diseases of the spiritual body. I call them something else entirely. Oh, okay. yeah. You know, I'm observing mm -hmm. um, I'm observing quantifiable elements in the spiritual body, which which uh, I describe in terms of colour, quality, mm -hmm. brightness, flow, mm -hmm. all of these kinds of things. I, I, I feel that that's... The measurable things. They're, they're very measurable, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Where were we? Um, so we're just describing the... We're still talking about the person because I haven't got to the point of my discussion yet. But, okay, uh, <laughs> well, do you want me to say what I was going to say about... Well, yes, I yeah, do. Okay. Yes, I do. Okay, so basically, uh, when I observe people on Earth, I'm not looking at the height of their spiritual body. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the colours, the energy flow, how how bright or dark the different quality i think i've said that is, yes. that, is that clear very clear yeah, okay, very right. clear so now when i look at this person in front of me i can if you wish describe the physical form but it's actually frankly not something that i'm used to really like honing in on on anymore yeah. what i look at and what i sort of uh, i engage with the person clearly mm -hmm. uh but really what i'm my senses are very honed to what i uh, the same types of measurements that you've been making exactly. is the same type of measurements you're trying to make with this particular person. It's Thank probably you. the best way Thank of describing you. it, isn't yes, it? very clearly. And yeah. that's what I look at in yourself. Yes. So when I make a comparison, yep. what, I, uh, what I see is that the, um, this spark of brightness for want of... I really wish that I could... Um, create as we do here a picture, picture and project yeah, yeah. a picture um, <laughs> it'd be handy wouldn't it <laughs> it'd be a lot handier because yeah, it yeah. is very very difficult to uh, to describe, describe yeah, and for people to understand in the way that i'm describing yeah. i do it was I do even difficult that. to describe a physical thing without showing a person a picture let yes. alone a spiritual one yes, yeah. yes indeed <sighs> okay so okay. Uh, there's similarities yeah. um between yourself and this person in terms of uh, let's, uh, if I can ask some other basic questions okay. for the sake of our listeners' sake, okay. not, not uh, yes. uh, I, I sort of understand what the uh, answer is. Uh, did be, did but... you want to know the physical form? Because it's much taller, broader. Yes, much taller. Um, there's. You'd say much taller if you had a measurement. Like yeah, a... You can't measure. Yeah. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. But, you know, people of this development, yeah. they also they appear to us in my development. It's almost hard to discern a height because it's not that it's like a towering yeah. skyscraper, but it's the, the spiritual senses don't operate in the way that they do on Earth. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. as the senses operate on Earth. It's yeah. not like you get out a measuring stick and measure someone. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a sense of their presence that is quite large yeah. even though you don't have to necessarily look, up uh, uh, look very very far far yeah. up yeah. but you understand there's a largeness so yeah. so perhaps if i could just i don't like doing this because it's really unscientific but <laughs> if i could give uh a sort oh, I feel of it can be quite scientific but observation no but... is it my I feel my observation very scientific <laughs> exactly uh, but i mean for the purposes of trying to explain it to someone on earth yeah, can i just so make difficult. it very clear that this is an analogy yes this is not what i'm observing yeah but it is as if for a person on earth 
to observe someone over six feet tall with broad shoulders, uh, with quite perfect symmetrical facial features, mm -hmm. uh, large warm eyes, mm -hmm. um, with a lot of uh, kindness perhaps. Again, I don't like using mm -hmm. the unquantifiable terms, mm -hmm. but kindness conveyed. Um, a broad smile, uh, hair of some length, but not, uh, yeah, it's very difficult, but uh, not of, not like this hair. Uh, not know. long like Mary's hair. Yes. Um, uh, broad shoulders, um, is this what you mean? Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, that's it's, good. It's yes. as if you are encountering someone like that on when, you, when you're in your physical form. If you're form. in your physical form. But, but, but it's not an intimidating presence. It's, in fact, a very... Uh, Gentle. Yes. Gentle presence. Yes. Yeah, not someone who might be have a potential to violence. Mm. Correct, and that that's that's the other benefit of being here mm. is that when into uh, there's a sense that occurs in the spiritual body mm. that you immediately can discern the potentials within a person. Certainly, in once you've reached my development, mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. you understand and can feel the potentials within a person, mm -hmm. uh, f not purely through the observation of the eye. And mm -hmm. I understand now that I probably haven't clarified that enough now as we in our prior discussion when I'm talking about observing the people and their spiritual bodies on earth. It's not the, yeah, because a lot of people here would think, oh, you're looking at them. And in a sense, you are. But it's using a spiritual sense yes. rather than a physical sense. And yes. maybe what we do for the sake of our listeners on Earth is that if they haven't heard it already before from us, and that is that the spiritual senses of the spirit body, are, there are more senses. So besides the senses of sight, sound, you know, yes. hearing, smelling and touch and so forth, uh, the five senses that we commonly associate with the physical body, there are more senses, and so these senses can also be used in observation. That's correct. And also mm. the senses that we commonly understand to be sight, smell, hear, touch, and so forth um, on Earth, they still exist here, but they have different qualities yes. and abilities. So when mm. I say I look or <coughs> see or, or observe someone, mm -hmm. even in the sense of... It's sight, there's a different quality to the sight, mm. and that also develops as we develop our, ourselves and can move more freely within the spiritual realms. Mm. Even those senses develop further as well. Of course. So, and so it's. And I think most of our listeners who are regular listeners probably understand that from us, even though they might not understand what that looks like and means, you mm. know, because obviously they haven't visited the spirit world. Mm. Um, so, so I've asked the second one to come. Mm. And maybe if we just, just a quick comment or two about, <laughs> uh, do they look the same in appearance? No, they're so, similar. So they look a bit similar, but they're not the same body. It doesn't look like the same body. No. Um, can you touch both of them? Yes. Yes. So they're solid, they're solid bodies from a spirit perspective. Yes. Again, you have to be careful about your language, but yes. yes. But, you know, as I've been explaining it to people on Earth in terms of helping them come to understand. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so there's two now. What, and any similarities between the two? Well, yes. Yes. Um, so we, when it comes to that, I know this is very uh, hard, but um, when it comes to the personality nature that you were talking about and the, they're pretty much identical? Is that, yes. In fact, they are identical, you'd yes. say? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, um, have you ever observed somebody's spirit body disappear? Uh, well, I've observed people leave. And to it go seems to another so sphere. they've disappeared, yeah. yes, especially high, high, well, what you call higher spirit. Mm. But you've never mm. seen a spirit body actually disappear? No. Mm. You see, I understand, I think, what you're attempting to do here. Yep. 
Uh, and I'm not opposed to this. And I think this is interesting evidential, you know, in, in terms of evidence. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm willing to now go ahead and continue to um, so basically, investigate it, this. So, yeah, if I could However, describe okay. to our listeners, basically you've got two people standing in front of you. They don't look the same. They don't have the same body, appearance-wise. Mm. But the quality, the quality, what you've been anal analysing as the qualities, the substance of the individual in terms of your behavioural analysis, and you com you're comparing the quality and substance of the individual with their behaviour, you can see that these two people are pretty much identical. They feel like the same person. Well, the quality and substance is, uh, it feels identical. Yes. Yes, so I'm not really observing that much of their behaviour, but the, the quality and substance, which I'm accustomed to, Analyzing, yes, it's there's no question. So, uh, like, right. mm. go ahead. Yeah. Um, now, what I'm going to do is get them to explain what happened, what they observed at my before my conception. It's difficult for me to understand. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really understand it. Mm -hmm. And they explain that it is difficult for... Just, <laughs> yes, just as I had explained to you about the changing of the senses mm -hmm. that occurs, clearly they, their sensory development is far exceeding my own, and so it is difficult for them to convey exactly in a way that I will understand exactly what they observed. Yes, yes. But, but as I've now introduced you, <laughs> if you like, and you know now that I'm introducing you to myself. Y yes. That's what they claim. That's right. But it's not what you can measure. No, and that's, that's what I was attempting to say earlier. Like, I, I, I feel this is uh, very interesting evidence. Yes. Uh, but I do still need to analyse it in terms No, of... I, I get that. Yes. But um, the reason why I've done that is that they could explain... You've now met... <laughs> mm, mm. You've now met, uh, for the very first time, a person who can actually explain what happened at my return. Even, yeah, yeah, even though yeah, it's certainly. difficult to understand. Even though it's difficult to understand, <laughs> yes. And I, I, I almost wish to not speak with you anymore so that I can... It, it's taking a lot of my focus and attention to try and understand what they're saying to me. Yeah. And it's difficult to maintain this conversation uh, well, when my interest is now... And as, being as you know, we're direction. talking about they, but from my perspective, obviously, it's me. So what I'm going to do is just now gone yes <laughs> i'm a bit frustrated because i'd prefer to speak to them yes well they'll come back when uh, i'll come back <laughs> it would be a better way of saying it uh i'm happy to come back whenever you are so if you want them back to talk to you about things i'm perfectly okay. happy okay to come back and talk to you about things for the sake of our <laughs> people who are listening about yes, it, there's look, quite a lot of confusion already uh, probably I, by now. <laughs> well, I do understand that you're doing something for listeners, but if but I'm also, very honest... But also I, for you. Uh, well, yes, I'm, I, I'm slightly less interested in your viewers than you are. Let's just say that. Uh, you know, I'm far more mm. interested in establishing evidence and understanding fully what is attempting to be taught to me now so that I can then go ahead and measure it. Mm -hmm. And then I would like to discuss it with you because it's it's sort of... Um, All right, so, so you'd like to have another discussion at some point and, mm. and we talk about what mm. evidence... I, I, don't, I don't wish to cut you off. No, no, I understand right. no, you wish right. to no, speak no, about something about further that. now, but I just, yeah. um, you know, just yeah. being... Um, as you know, I'm interested in all people. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, I don't wish to be disrespectful. I no, just no, mean, no, I like, understand. It's, a, it's an unusual situation we're in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm interested in all people mostly because I, you know, obviously enjoy helping uh, all people have a deeper and a more happier experience. And so to me, your welfare and, and interests are just as important as the people who are listening to, to us. You, you understand? Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I'm trying. I know it's a bit uh, sometimes frustrating, but... 
um, I'm trying to help them along the little path as well for, for the same reason that I want to do the same with yourself and that is to, to uh, have an, uh, an opening of experience so that you can enjoy your life more. Yes, I, I do think, that, I mean, I think this is a, perhaps a side point, but it's very, um, there's certain, um, there's certain challenges when one wishes to um, convey ideas and have discussions when people are in different conditions. So, certainly, certainly. And, and this is inherent to, to all of existence for as far as I've been able to discern, you know. No, that's very true. Uh, and, and so I feel that what's occurring now is that we sort of have four elements, well, five, I suppose, if I analyse it completely, you know. Yes. Speaking with these entities who are clearly uh, who have now gone a higher development, yes, than and, myself. Yeah. Uh, I'm speaking through a person. I, I, I'm speaking with you, and and uh, there's certain elements to you which are unique, which I've dedicated a lot of time to trying to understand. Yeah. Then I understand also that there's another observation uh, and of people I understand your recording and so other people will be viewing this but I feel very limited in the way that I can even convey things in this context given where I am and then to attempt to convey what someone in a vastly higher development than myself has conveyed to me and then convey that forward in a way that is true I feel that there are inherent difficulties with such uh, communication channels. You yeah, know, of is, course, is, and, is, but, but we can only do our best, right? Mm, <laughs> this mm. is the way I see it. I you see, can only yeah. you can only do your best with uh, with what you have in every one of those things. So, in terms of your own experience, in terms of the channel you're using, in terms of the audience that's there, you can only do your best. And it's not it's not like you're expected to be perfect about it. I know the scientific endeavour part of it requires perfection or requires... Well, I think we must aim for... Aim for, uh, aim for perfection. A, tr a true representation of the facts. Of you course. Know, I feel that that's very yeah. important. Yeah, but, you know, obviously, as, as anybody would know, um, you can't explain highly complex mathematical formulas to a child who doesn't even speak yet. Um, so so yes. naturally, you know, there are going to be limitations to, to this process. But um, I suppose what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to get at here, as you, as you can see, is that you now have had the opportunity to talk with a person who actually observed the, in, the, the return process. Mm -hmm. And uh, while that has its own confusions associated with it based upon condition and what you understand, they're certainly appearing and ex explaining something and for some reason appearing at my request. Um, so, so obviously there's something going on there. Mm. 